questions for reflection. Our readings for Christmas, the Nativity of the Lord, are taken from the cycle of readings used at the Christmas Mass of the day. We begin with the great Hebrew prophet Isaiah proclaiming with joy, the Lord is King, He's returned to Zion. And that joy finds its source in the birth of the Christ child for those with eyes to see. And all of the prophecies of a coming Messiah are now fulfilled in this child, laying in a manger. God has given us His yes in response to millennia of prayer. The longing for redemption is now finding its fulfillment. The Redeemer has come. St. Paul, writing to the Christians in Corinth, told them, and I quote, As God is faithful, our word to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was proclaimed to you by us, Silvanus and Timothy and me, was not yes and no, but yes has been in him. For however many are the promises of God, their yes is in him. And therefore the amen from us also goes through him to God for glory. The eternal word entered into human history, into time and opened it to eternity. In His incarnation, His nativity, His saving life, death and resurrection, the yes of God is given to the whole world. Love is born on Christmas morn, and in Him, the world begins again. So we join the psalmist in the shouts of joy proclaimed in our responsorial psalm. Yahweh has made known His saving power, revealed His saving justice for the nations mindful of His faithful love and His constancy. And the whole wide world has seen the saving power of our God. Acclaim Yahweh, burst into shouts of joy. Play to Yahweh on the harp, instruments, trumpet, horn. Acclaim the presence of the King. In our second reading, the author of the Letter to the Hebrews explains, at many moments in the past and by many means, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our time, the final days, He has spoken to us in the person of His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the ages. He is the reflection of God's glory and bears the impress of God's own being, sustaining all things by His powerful command. In the fourth chapter of this New Testament letter, the author tells us, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. The eternal word, coexistent with the Father and the Spirit in the perfect unity that is Trinitarian love, became a real man in real time, in real history. He understands who we are. He entered the entirety of the human experience, and in him it's been forever transformed. Love is born today and the world begins again. And the gospel for this, the Mass of the Day, is taken from the beginning of the fourth gospel, the one written by the beloved disciple John. His was the last gospel and reflects the maturing understanding in the church of the Paschal mystery, the saving birth and life and passion and death and resurrection of Jesus and what it was really all about, who Jesus is and who we are becoming in Him as we welcome His saving grace. John's Gospel is the most theological of the four Gospels. It contains the mature reflection of the early church on the significance of what we celebrate on Christmas. The words rendered in English dwelt among us can be literally translated, he pitched his tent among us. The God of the whole universe who dwelt in inaccessible light, whom no man had ever seen and lived, became a man, a vulnerable baby. He lived, he lives among us. He became one of us, a human person, and made his home with us. And he continues to live with us as we live our life now in him. And because Jesus has been born, we're given a new way in which to walk. We're given what the beloved disciple John calls the power to become children of God. Through grace, we receive the capacity to choose love and be transformed into the image and the likeness of him who is love incarnate, Jesus Christ. We can be born again anew and that's why we celebrate.